Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, October 14th. We start in chapter seven today. So we're done with the enzymes. <coughs> uh, can you hear me, guys? Yes. yes. Good, yeah. thank you. And uh, so chapter seven, deals with sugars. Sugars sometimes called saccharides. So why they're called saccharides? Let me share my screen with you. It comes from a Greek word. Share screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. So, <clears throat> so, so saccharides. So it comes from a Greek word saccharon which means sugar, very simple. Sa Saccharon. Means sugar. In Greek and so in this chapter we will talk about uh, so we'll uh, look at the structure and names for various monosaccharides so there's um, so this chapter is a slate is somewhat different from the other chapters in a way that there is more memorization this memorization here so I told you in the last chapter there is more math than in other chapters in the other chapters. In this chapter, there is more sort of memorization in a way that um, the whole, there are a whole bunch of rules that you need to uh, remember, like what are D sugars, what are L sugars, what, what's an American position, what's alpha, what's beta, what kind of an American linkage, you have to be able to remember the rules, how to derive those. And also, <coughs> you will need to remember s structures of some basic uh, monosaccharides. For example, glucose, galactose, mannose. So you will need to know how those are different. But again, those are, these will not come like uh, without any context. For example, if, uh, if you start with the structure of glucose, right? Then if I ask you on a test or now, can you draw the structure of galactose knowing the structure of glucose and then uh, you should remember okay galactose is a four epimer of glucose and so you take the structure of glucose which i'll give you on the test so you don't have to memorize that but you have to be able to derive the other sugars from that so galactose is, a, is the epimer, which you still, if you remember what epimer is, it's good. If you don't, we'll go over it. Don't worry. So it's a epimer of glucose at position four. And then you can draw the structure of galactose. Then if I ask you for the structure of mannose, you should uh, remember, oh, that's the epimer of glucose at position two. And then you draw the structure of mannose. So it's it's a sort of memorization, but um, kind of uh, there are specific ways to memorize uh, ways to do it to 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 uh, to make it easy, right? So it's not like um, you have to memorize something without the context, without anything to attach it to. 
there is always some kind of attachment that you can apply, making memorization easier. All right. So uh, we will find out that monosaccharides uh, can be drawn using a more open chain and ring forms. Uh, then we'll draw disaccharides. Okay, so those are molecules which, which contain two monosaccharides linked together. Can you think of a, now before we even start this chapter, can you think of a disaccharide that you um, um, may have eaten this morning? Disaccharide. This might be dumb, but is lactose a disaccharide? Mm -hmm. It is? Lactose. Yeah, and that's from glucose and galactose, right? Yes. Uh, how about even, it is even easier, even simpler? So lactose, if you fructose. put lactose, if you put milk in your sugar, what if you <laughs> in your sugar in your coffee? What if you put sugar in your coffee? What kind of disaccharide did you put? Well, sucrose. sugar, sucrose. Su su uh, sucrose. That's right. So, do you know what kind of two monosaccharides? Compose the structure of sucrose, glucose. glucose and fructose. Glucose and fructose. That's right. The interesting thing is that uh, we use sugar as a sweetener, right? Uh, which is the um, molecule that is composed um, from glucose and fructose linked together, but glucose and fructose separately, they're actually sweeter than sucrose. So it's interesting that uh, actually we use two molecules which are sweeter and we put it in a sweetener that we use on a daily basis, which is less sweet, um, but I guess uh, more easily obtained from natural sources. All right, so we'll talk about uh, event. Uh, after disaccharides, we'll talk about polysaccharides and Something is missing here. What's in between? So you have monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. What's in between monosaccharides and polysaccharides? There is a um, prefix that we use. Let's say monosaccharides is single, disaccharides two, polysaccharides 10,000. How about 10 or 15? Oligo. What is it? Oligo. Oligo. Oligo, perfect. Oligosaccharides. Yes, there are those as well. Oligosaccharides. All right, and then we'll talk about biological function of, uh, of all of these molecules, as well as glycoconjugates. So we'll find out that actually these saccharides besides being um, everyday molecules um, in our diet or that compose the living creatures or plants, we'll find out also that um, these saccharides can be attached to proteins, they can be attached to lipids, and they can alter the function of these macromolecules. All right, so a lot to discuss. We have uh, three lectures on this. And uh, so, carbohydrate, so carbohydrates, so another word is carbohydrates. And the reason why, and then sometimes they're called, they're called carbohydrates is because uh, in general, you can actually describe their form, brutal formula, like so, right? So the number of carbons equals number of water molecules, not water molecules, or sort of um, combination of H2O atoms in a molecule and those are equal, right? So carbohydrate, carbohydrate. And you probably know that carbohydrates are the most abundant molecules on earth. And um, just think about of all the cellulose, right? Cellulose is a carbohydrate. So, um, um, I guess the, the textbook gives you a number of 100 billion metric tons 
of, carbo of uh, carbon dioxide is converted into cellulose, okay, uh, through photosynthesis. So remember, so, so carbohydrates in general, most of them will be formed through photosynthesis. Through photosynthesis, and there is light. Now, uh, if you look at this equation here, if you look at the this part of the equation and this part of the equation, uh, do they match? Is something um, funny about this? Something is extra or missing? Extra oxygen. <laughs> oxygen, oxygen, that's right. So photosynthesis, remember, Photosynthesis takes carbon dioxide, takes water, produces carbohydrates, and releases a molecule of oxygen. And it's this right here, O2, which will be released. All right, so uh, they can be small. We'll talk about glyceraldehyde, very small carbohydrate. And there are some very large ones, amylopectin, for example. Uh, which have this number 200 million molecular weight, 200 million grams per mole. So uh, fulfill a variety of functions. So energy source, energy storage, right? So uh, for example, starch, right? So the molecule that um, allows us to um, allows the plant primarily to store the energy. Can you think of an, a, a similar molecule in animals? So in plants, it's starch for energy storage. Glucogen? Glycogen, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, in our liver, for example, right? So if we have um, um, excess of glucose that we don't need, we have just had a meal that glucose can be converted can can, can go through uh, glycolysis in, and go into fats and uh, some of it will go into the liver in the form of glycogen which is sort of the immediate the immediate release so for example if your brain if your brain needs glucose because remember the, the the food source for brain is glucose right the glucose cannot sorry the brain cannot metabolize fats it cannot grab fatty fatty acids and metabolize them into energy so it's glucose which will which will be transported into the brain and the immediate source of glucose will be the glycogen in the liver Right, so if you take a test and you didn't have much uh, a good breakfast, then glycogen from the liver from the day before will be um, broken down into glucose, which will be which will go into the bloodstream, go into the brain, and provide it with the required energy. All right, so structural component of cell walls, exoskeletons, right? So cell walls, we know cellulose. We talked about cell walls of bacteria, right? Um, and acetylglucosamine, uh, we talked about the enzyme that breaks down the uh, cell walls in bacteria. Remember the name of the enzyme? Lysozyme. Lysozyme. So also exoskeletons of... Uh, or bugs, right? So if you step on a cockroach, you can hear this cracking sound. And that's what it is. You're breaking down the exoskeleton. Of, like the chitin? Uh, sorry? The chitin? Chitin, yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. So um, we'll talk about the structure of chitin as well. Okay, so um, uh, informational molecules in cell signaling, 
Right. So we'll also find out that um, sugars are important in cell in cell cell signaling. Right. So so there are proteins such as lectins, for example, which are decorated with different sugars, and which are important in recognizing other types of cells. Are very important in the immune system. Right. So. Um, all right, we'll chat about this a little bit. And uh, covalently linked with proteins and lipids. So I already mentioned that. All right. So basic nomenclature. <clears throat> so the number of carbon atoms, right, in a carbohydrate. And then you add suffix O's. So, for example, three carbons will be triose. Will be triose. Uh, four carbon atoms. What would you call a four carbon atom carbohydrate? Tetros. Tetros, pentos. What's glucose? Hexose. Hexose. So, common functional groups. Uh, all carbohydrates initially. Um, had a carbonyl group. Um, well, the reason why not, we will talk about cyclic structures of carbohydrates. When, when the carbohydrates cyclize to form cyclic structures, then carbonyl disappears. But if you open it, you will have a carbonyl group. So, uh, so based on the open structures, uh, carbohydrates can be, can be split into, al into aldehydes, which are aldoses and ketones, which are ketoses, right? So remember the difference with aldehyde, you have one alkyl group and a hydrogen with the ketone, you have two alkyl groups. And you will see that in the structures of carbohydrates. Okay, here it is. So aldose is a carbohydrate with the aldehyde functionality shown here. And a ketose carbohydrate with the ketone functionality shown here. Right, so you can see here there are two alkyl groups, alkyl group on this side and the alkyl group on this side. And here we have a hydrogen on this side and an alkyl group on this side. So, uh, so this molecule is known as glyceraldehyde. So um, it's a triose, we just decided this was a triose, right? Three carbons, O's, it's a carbohydrate, and it's aldo because it's an aldehyde. So aldo triose. And the hydroxyacetone shown here. Remember what acetone is? Acetone is a ketone. Just trying to help you remember these things by providing context. So if this is acetone, so dihydroxyacetone will be you add two hydroxy groups. Right, so these are two hydroxy groups. You add those to acetone and you get the dihydroxyacetone. So it's a keto triose, also three carbons but it's a ketone. And um, what's the relationship between these two molecules? Now from organic chemistry, you know how to compare two molecules and um, derive the relationship between them. What would you call the relationship is? What are they relative to each other? They're isomers. Oh, isomers, what kind of isomers? Constitutional. Constitutional isomers, correct. So uh, to determine if they're isomers, remember we have to derive the Bruto for formula, right? So let's do that. So this is C, carb, uh, C3, correct? And this one is C3.
and this one is C3, C3 as well. How many hydrogens? One, two, three, four, five, six. H6. How many oxygens? Three. Three. How about how about the hydroxyacetone? How many hydrogens? Six. Six. And oxygens? Three. 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 All right. So they have the same number of uh, and the same kind of atoms, right? Only different arrangement, different connectivity, right? So these are not enantiomers or diastereomers. These are not stereoisomers. You can see here, the, carbon, the carbonyl here is an aldehyde. This carbon is bound to hydrogen. And this carbon here is not bound to the carbonyl group anymore. The carbonyl is in the middle. So, so these are constitutional isomers. Constitutional isomers. So uh, I don't know if the book goes talks about it, but in general, the difference between constitute the difference between aldosis and ketosis is the fact that they're constitutional isomers. Okay. So, but they can also be stereoisomers. So uh, remember stereoisomers are non-superimposable mirror images. And so sugars that contain many chiral centers, only the one that is most distant from the carbonyl group is designated as D, if it's right, and L if, it, if it's left. So, uh, remember that um, ice enantiomers have the same physical properties, right? So D and L isomers over sugar, such as glucose, for example, L-glucose and D-glucose, will have the same water solubility, right? They will have the same melting point, right? They will have the same sublimation point, they will have the same, will, I, will they have the same color? No. That's a tough one. Why not? Because isn't color based off of conjugation? Right, but there's no, um, well, there's no conjugation. So the color with the glucose is white, right? So it's, um, it doesn't have a specific color to it. But in general, unless you apply plain polarized light, then uh, the absorption of light will be exactly the same for the two enantiomers. Remember the enantiomers, the, the only difference uh, between the absorption of light between enantiomers is if you apply plain polarized light. But since light is a mixture of all um, uh, of all possible um, uh, oscillations, right, in all directions, then the absorption will be identical between the two enantiomers. How about the taste? Will L glucose and D glucose taste the same? So think about drugs. We talked about drugs, single enantiomer drugs. We talked about the fact that different enantiomers can have different effects on the body. Remember the drug, the infamous drug, uh, what is this, Talid, Talid, is it thalidomide? Is that the word? Yeah. So how is that? Um, How about LNG glucose? What's, um, 
So just the way to understand this, obviously you can memorize that they will have different taste. And, but the reason is that our proteins, basically our biological molecules are composed of single enantiomers only, right? And so all proteins are composed of L amino acids. And so um, just think about it. If you have um, L L amino acids forming a complex with L glucose. What's the relationship between this and L amino acids? and D-glucose. What's the stereochemical relationship between these two? LL and LD. If this was LL versus DD or DD. Would they be diastereomers? So those would be diastereomers. These ones. Enantiomers? These enantiomers. ones will be enantiomers. Remember, to go from one enantiomer to the other, you have to invert every stereocenter in your molecule, right? So if you invert all your amino, if you invert all your um, glucose into D and leave amino acids as L, then the, sorry. Um, hold on a second. If to, to go from one enantiomer to the other, you have to invert every single stereocenter. So these will be enantiomers. And so they will be then recognized as the same. And these will be enantiomers as well. But because our uh, amino acids are only L amino acids, we, have done, we don't have any D amino acids. Then when you put L glucose in the body, let's say a mixture of L-glucose and D-glucose, then L amino acids will recognize L-glucose and D-glucose differently because these will be diastereomers. Diastereomers. Okay, and so they'll have different tastes. All right, so most hexoses in the living organism are D-stereoisomers. De so, so um, glucose that makes up the table sugar is actually, uh, it's a D-glucose. But some sugars do occur in L form. And one of example is L-arabinose. So we'll look at that. All right, so just some reminder. So enantiomers or mirror images. Right. Just to clarify, so going from LL to DD would be enantiomers, and going from LL to LD is diastereomers. Mm hmm. That's right. To go from one enantiomer to the other, you have to invert every single stereocenter. If you forget one of them, then you get a diastereomer. Okay, so this so enantiomers are mirror images. Anybody remembers the name of this molecule? Start our 
carbohydrate naming using our carbohydrate naming skills. Remember the name of this? Some kind you of aldehyde. Sorry? Aldose. It's an aldose. What kind of aldose? How many carbons? Three tetraldose. Triose. So, aldo. So aldo triose, correct? Right. And the specific name for this molecule? So if this is the simplest carbohydrate, what's the name of it? Glyceraldehyde, glyceraldehyde. So uh, the reason why this is glyceraldehyde is because this molecule here, anybody knows this three, this trial? Anybody knows the name of this? Well, you will know this. Glycerol. Yeah, glycerol. So you will know actually this very well when we talk about lipids because glycerol is the main component of lipids that compose our cell membranes, right? So glycerol. And so if you oxidize one of the hydroxyl groups into an aldehyde, then you get glyceraldehyde. So that's one way to remember the structure of glyceraldehyde. All right, so here is our, um, remember again, so uh, by convention, so we go um, just like with the amino acids, right? And this is actually uh, also confirmed by experiment. Remember when we talked about amino acids, we were saying that if you have the NH2 group on the left, it's gonna be an L amino acid. If you have the NH2 group on the right, it's gonna be D amino acid, right? And I told you, and the textbook also told you, that this convention with amino acids came from glyceraldehyde. Glyceraldehyde, uh, which was shown that this glyceraldehyde, where the hydroxy group is on the left, rotates the plane polarized left, plain polarized light to the left. This one rotates it to the right. And so this is levo rotatory and this is dextra rotatory. And so, so this will be L glyceraldehyde, this will be D glyceraldehyde, just like with the amino acids. And uh, so these are Fisher projection formulas. Now, perspective formulas, uh, remember how Fisher projection formulas, projection formulas are derived. So the horizontal groups are towards us. The vertical groups are away from us. Yes, but uh, since we're using Fisher projection formulas, we don't really need to, do, to use these wedges because we already know, once you draw the Fisher projection, we already know that horizontal groups are towards us and the vertical groups are away from us. Okay. So, <clears throat> so remember I mentioned to you the word epimers. So epimers are stereoisomers, which differ at only one chiral center. So the ep, uh, since remember I told you to go from one enantiomer to the other enantiomer, you have to invert every single stereocenter. If you invert only one and the other stay the same, you will not get a mirror image, right? You will not get a mirror image and therefore epimers are not enantiomers. And, but epimers are diastereomers. They just um, have one specific case of diastereomers, right? Because diastereomers can, you know, can, be, can, have a, can be different at more than one chiral center. But if they are only different at one chiral centrum, then there are epimers. So epimers are, sp are a specific case of diastereomers, when only one chiral center is the, diff is the point of difference. And therefore they have different uh, physical properties. 
So water solubility, melting temperature. So for example, D-erythrose. D-erythrose, it's the name of a carbohydrate. And D-3-os. <coughs> so uh, those are, so 3-os is a C2 epimer of D-erythrose. So if this is one, two, three, four. Same thing here, one, two, three, four. So you can see the difference between these two is the stereocenter at position two, right? But position three stereocenter is the same, but position two stereocenter is different. This one is to the right, and this one is to the left. But the both these sugars, the both these sugars and the the um, the way this works, the reason why these are these sugars is we're looking at the stereocenter at the last chiral carbon in the chain. This one, and this hydroxy group is to the right. This hydroxy group is to the right. D sugar. And this is D sugar. Okay, so what have we learned? We learned about L and D sugars. So what you have to look at, you have to look at the last stereo center in the chain. And if the hydroxyl is on the right, it's gonna be D sugar. If it's up on the left, then it's gonna be L sugar. And then uh, compare the other stereo, stereo centers. If the all stereo centers are inverted, they're enantiomers. If not are inverted, they're diastereomers. And specifically, if only one of them is inverted, then these are epimers. Are there any questions? Yeah, do we always check the last chiral center? Yeah, so the last chiral center will tell you if it's a D or L sugar. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, the stereomers, stereoisomers that are not mirror images have different physical properties, water solubilities. So, for example, trios, erythros are different. So, so we just talked about that. All right, so these are aldoses. All right, more about epimers. So I told you about um, mannose and galactose before, right? And here's a slide that describes of what I was trying to tell you at the beginning of this lecture. So this is glucose. First of all, uh, let's look at glucose and let's look at this carbon here. Carbon here, the hydroxy group is to the right. So it's a D sugar. So it's a D glucose. D glucose. And it's a hexose because there are six carbons, right? And we can also say that this is aldohexose because it's an aldehyde, right? All right. So here is the mannose. Mannose, it's still a D sugar because we're looking at carbon five and it's the same as in glucose. But what are other differences? Carbon four is the same, carbon three is the same, carbon two is different. So the difference between mannose and glucose is the stereochemistry of carbon two. Therefore, these are epimers. In other words, another way to say is that they're diastereomers 
which differ in the stereochemistry of one of one stereocenter. Now galactose, and you see this is epimert position two, right? Now galactose, this is still D sugar, D galactose, and um, let's look at the other carbons. So carbon two is the same as glucose, carbon three is the same, carbon four, here's the difference, and carbon five is the same. So because of the carbon four is different, these are epimers as well. And then the last question is for you, what's the relationship between galactose and mannose? Are those epimers? If these are epimers, these are epimers. So then are these epimers too? Mannose and galactose? No. 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 Why are they not epimers? It's more than two carbons. Which are at two carbons. Yeah, more than one. Yeah. So, uh, so we have actually two carbons which have different stereochemistries. So, uh, carbon two, right? Carbon two has different stereochemistry, and carbon four has different stereochemistry. So, what's the proper word that we're gonna use for stereochemical relationship between these two? Diastereomers. Just diastereomers diastereomers, which are not epimers. Okay. Okay, so um, common carbohydrates. Um, so uh, ribose, uh, you will we will see a lot of ribos in this class later. At, in fact, next chapter I think. Why is that? What's the what's the ribose component of RNA? RNA or yeah, that's right, RNA, but not DNA, right? Right. Why not DNA? It's deoxyribose. Deoxyribose, right? So still kind of ribose, but only missing a hydroxy group, right? All right, so glucose, standard, six carbon sugar, galactose, epimer, mannose, epimer, glucose, and fructose is the ketose form of glucose. So let's talk about ketosis a little bit. So, um, uh, so we looked at uh, this one already, dihydroxyacetone. Remember I told you that this is gonna be acetone, right? And if you add two hydroxy groups, this becomes dihydroxyacetone. So this is the simplest three carbon ketose. Now there's a four carbon, add another one, chiral center. So this one has no chiral centers, but this one is D-erythrolose. You can see again, you're looking at this carbon here. So uh, the last carbon, last stereocenter in the chain, and this will be d sugar. All right. Um, so higher sugar. So this is uh, our ribose. So this is five carbons. So we have a um, hydroxy group on the right, D sugar, D ribose, D arabinose, hydroxy group on the right, Xylose, hydroxy group on the right, and Lyxose, I don't know how to pronounce that, Lyxose, or Lyxose, hydroxy group on the right. Do we need to memorize uh, the structures for each of these? Nah, not these ones. I, um, even the main ones, I, as I mentioned to you, I will, on a test, I will give you some structures to start with. So I will not ask you to draw me a structure of that, right? It will always be uh, look at the structure of this and derive the structure of that. So with these five carbon sugars, um, uh, let me think about it, how to, maybe I'll give you a list of sugars that I want you to know something about, okay? That would be really helpful. 
Thank you. Yeah, and then you can actually go by that list. And so these are uh, hexoses. So these are six carbon aldoses. Six carbon aldoses, allos, altros, all these are D, all, all these are D sugars. This is our D glucose, mannose. Remember, mannose is the epimer at this position. Gulose, idose, galactose is the epimer at this position. Oops, incorrect position. Incorrect position. Position four, two, three, four. This is position five, four, five. All right, Talos. So, um, yeah, I didn't erase this slide. I had to have it twice. So for deketosis, so these are, you can see how many sugars there are. Yeah, lots of them, lots of them. Very important for life. Yeah, there are a lot of them are utilized in various uh, metabolic pathways of different organisms and plants. And so, um, Maybe not very common for um, human with a metabolic system, but uh, very common in other organisms. So ribulose, uh, it's a five carbon, it's a pentose, six carbon. So what one is important one is defructose, right? So remember the difference between fructose and glucose, for example, is that glucose is an aldose and fructose is a ketose, right? So when we talked about uh, when sucrose, table sugar, and we just said it's a disaccharide, which is derived from the linked molecules of glucose and fructose, there's fundamental difference between glucose and fructose. Glucose is an aldose, fructose is a ketose. And a couple of other ketoses. All right, so we just have a couple of minutes. Um, we are about to start an important discussion on how these um, linear, so these are all open chain sugars. What's important for us to understand is that these actually, uh, in most cases, sugars don't exist in the open chain. It's just for us to, uh, to be able to easily understand their structures. But in most cases, these sugars will exist as in cyclic forms. So specifically, you can already understand, for example, um, for example, in this sugar, uh, well, let's say uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say in fructose, you can already see that there is a lone pair on this oxygen, right? There is also a lone pair on this oxygen. And either one of these can then attack the carbonyl group. And this is an electrophile. This is a nucleophile. And this will form a ring. And the ring, once it forms, this will be called a hemiacetal. And we will talk about hemiacetals and acetals starting on Friday. Are there any questions? Any questions about today? So you have a, so the problem, sapling problem is op, uh, will be open at one o'clock. I just um, delay for a couple hours because I have another section of, of biochem. I want to finish that lecture. And then the sapling homework will be open. All right, and guys, I want more participation in the discussion forum more participation. There's a couple of questions in the chat. Okay. All right, guys, I'll see you on Friday. Have a good couple of days. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.